Joining me now to discuss the war in Israel is Democratic presidential candidate and host of the popular YouTube channel, Young Turks. Welcome, Cenk Yuga. So, so let's just jump straight into it. Who's at fault uh, for the deaths of the innocent people who have been killed recently in the war in Israel in the recent weeks? Well, uh, I have a, maybe an answer that might be unique to your audience, which is the right wing. And here, here's what I mean by that. Um, with for those who are unfamiliar uh within the palestinians and the muslim community at large um hamas uh, muslim fundamentalists etc are considered the right wing and the right wing almost always drives for war and profits from war and gains from war and conflict uh and in israel uh unfortunately the same is true it's true everywhere it's also true in america it's true in turkey russia you name it and in Israel, Netanyahu and his cabinet is filled with warmongering right-wingers, and so they profit from war, and they stay in power from war. So it's the two sides that have agreed. And now that we've seen the reporting from Haaretz and New York Times, etc., showing that uh, Netanyahu knew and funded Hamas, uh, it makes that point that I've been making for a long time even more stark, because one right-wing was helping the other right-wing, and the other, and then one right wing attacks the other right wing, which then causes a counterattack. And they're very happy because it cements them, their power. And the rest of us are miserable uh, as we suffer under their uh, brutal, endless wars. Um, so two points about, first of all, Joe Biden, who's a left wing president, is is quite is funding this. He's really pushing that hard. And uh, number two, um, would you call Hamas right wing? Oh, yeah, Hamas is definitely right wing. It's not even close. Uh, <laughs> nobody would consider Hamas left wing. Uh, no. Um, so, uh, and then in terms of Joe Biden, uh, if you know, if you're unfamiliar with American politics, uh, he's called left wing, but in reality, no, he's uh, a total right winger. The Democratic Party in, in America has become a center right party uh, and has basically a corporatist policy and will do whatever their donors tell them to do. And in this case, he's got massive donors in every direction, including defense contractors who love these wars and profit greatly from them. Uh, so, yeah, no, they, they're, everyone is headed in the same direction for the same reasons. For example, if we had real left wing leaders um, w like Bernie Sanders in, in America. Uh, I don't think that we'd be going in this direction. I think we'd be going towards a two-state solution. When America had a true left-wing leader like Jimmy Carter, he did the uh, the peace accords uh, at Camp David between Israel and Egypt. And guess what? Peace works. Egypt and Israel haven't fought since. They've, uh, there's been no casualties since. It is There's overwhelming proof that peace is not just the moral answer, it's the practical answer. It, it finally gets Israel to the safe haven that it's supposed to be. But unfortunately, we all suffer under the rule of right wingers as they drive for more war and less safety and security for all of us. See, so when I ask you that question, who who would you blame? I mean, like you said, your answer is definitely unique, as you did say. Uh, but I, my answer will be slightly different. My answer will be plain and simply Hamas. Like I did talk to a former Israeli general the other day, um, and who's someone who's very, who was very high up in the IDF and the, and the Minister of Defense. And he told me there were a lot of mistakes. So I think there was a mistake. So I'm not sure, I don't think they let them happen on purpose, but no matter what, it was Hamas that actually caused it, that actually did the massacre and actually killed over 1200 people on October the 7th. Yeah, no, I, uh, I think your analysis is totally wrong. Um, so let me uh, agree in part and then tell you the parts where I, I disagree. So uh, what Hamas did on October 7th is, uh, was horrific, totally unacceptable. Uh, they deserve uh, a ton of blame for that, and, and I have no problems with any of that. So that's the part I agree with, right? Um, now, the part I don't agree with is that, like, we just started the conflict on October 7th, and we don't know why Hamas did that. My God, why would the Palestinians be upset? Oh, I bet it's because they're all anti-Semitic. No, that's, of course, absurd. Uh, no, the reality is there's been a brutal 56-year occupation uh, they've been stripped of all their dignity and economic opportunity, uh, and uh, they don't have a sovereign state, and Israel's preventing it. The daily humiliation of the occupation is unbearable, let alone the fact that Israel can come in and kill as many of their civilians as possible at any time they want, cut off their water, power, electricity, and absolutely brutalize them. To discount that was a comical analysis, obviously incorrect. And then uh, when you look at what Israel has done since October 7th, 
they had the moral high ground. The, they had the sympathy of the whole world. They had the sympathy of America. And it's a moment where they could have been magnanimous and changed history. And I wish they had, and I would have been super proud of them if they had. But instead, they have now chosen to kill about 15 times the number of civilians that Hamas has killed. And if you say killing civilians is terrorism, I agree. That's why I condemn Hamas. That's why I also condemn the right-wing government of Israel for massacre after massacre. And 15 times worse than Hamas. Jesus. So if you think that that's not relevant, then you're on a different planet. I mean, don't you think there's a big difference between what Israel has done since October the 7th no. and what Hamas has done? Because no. Israel has just have been trying to defend themselves and trying to no. wipe out Hamas terrorists. Yeah, yeah I know. So first of all, uh, it's the same excuse that all empires use. And so let's do a bifurcation that I want to get back to the uh, uh, empires. So when it comes to Israel, we, we're in a really unique situation because Jews have been oppressed throughout the history of the world almost everywhere they've been. And so the, the yearning for a safe haven in, in creating a Jewish state in Israel is very understandable, okay? Now, I don't want to get back into an original uh, you know, debate about Zionism, and, but taking the land of the Palestinians is not right, et cetera. I understand both sides of that equation, but I understand why Israel needed to exist, et cetera. But to take that idea and say, oh, that's why Israel is the oppressed in this dynamic over the last 70 years, 75 years, is absurd. No, Israel's military is about at least 200 times more powerful than anything the Palestinians have. So to pretend that they are at large, they're certainly the victims on October 7th, but at large over these last 50, 75 years that Israel is the victim and they are the oppressed by the Palestinians is, again, if you're not enormously biased, it's a comical point of view. No one else in the world thinks that the Palestinians are oppressing the Israelis. Everyone can see with their own eyes that it's the Israelis massively oppressing the Palestinians. So that's just a stone cold fact. So in terms of how that plays out, uh, so when Israel says, oh, I have a right to defend myself, well, that's exactly what the Ottoman Empire said as they committed the Armenian genocide. They said, well, the Armenians hit us first. Yes, a small group of rebels, understandably, wanted independence from the Ottoman Empire. That didn't mean you should massacre their civilians. And the same thing is here true here. Hamas is a small group within the Palestinian territories. They attack Israel. And then Israel says, okay, now we're going to butcher the civilians in response. Well, that's a genocide and it's ethnic cleansing. And the fact that you were hit first does not excuse you killing 10, 15 times as many civilians. And one last thing, when you, when you see 2,000 pound bombs being dropped in residential areas, these, the propaganda of, oh, we're trying to get Hamas and they're, oh, they're using human shields. Again, look, for people who are biased, that works beautifully. They go, oh, yeah, that's it. Hamas had it coming. We had to kill their civilians. They, Hamas tricked us into it. Well, how come you don't get tricked into it? Let's try that. Okay, so don't kill their civilians because that and they say, well, it's because they're in the tunnels. But now the IDF has shown us the tunnels are almost completely unaffected by the bombing. So it turns out they barely killed any Hamas fighters who are all hiding in the tunnels. All they're doing, and now even Joe Biden acknowledges the indiscriminate killings of civilians. And, and I know Hamas is not better than that, but I was hoping that Israel was better than that. But unfortunately, they've shown yet again that they are not. So no, I totally understand what you're saying. And my personal thoughts uh, on this situation is what Hamas on did on October the 7th, like you believe this as well, is totally and utterly wrong. And that's an absolutely horrific thing. But I see a big, big difference between what Hamas have done and what, what Israel have done. Hamas, what they've done is they've terrorized, then they've, they've really just killed and massacred 15, 1,200 people in Israel. Israel have done, and now, like you mentioned, there should be a lot of question marks on what they've done and how they've done it. But I think they've really got a right to defend themselves against Hamas. And me personally, tell me if you disagree with it, I see the only chance of solution of peace uh, in the Middle East is at least with Hamas gone. Yeah, no, uh, again, totally disagree. So let me, uh, I shouldn't say totally, because there's plenty of parts that we're, we're, where we agree. So first off, this uh, standard of Hamas should be gone. It's a purposely undoable standard. Is Hamas ever going to raise their hands and go, okay, we, we, we lose, or, or here we are out in the open, come and bomb us. No, they're never going to do that. So it's a standard that cannot be met. 
So that means that, oh, right, we have permanent war. And by the way, Netanyahu is deeply unpopular in Israel uh, and, and across the world and in America, etc. And everyone believes, and the papers have written about this a lot, that if when the war is over, Netanyahu is going to uh, lose his job. So guess what that incentivizes Netanyahu to do? To make sure that the war is never over. And how do you do that? You do an impossible standard, like Hamas has to resign in a way that we can see with our own eyes. Well, that's preposterous. That's never going to happen. Look, do I wish that it would happen? Of course I wish it. Of course I wish it. But it's it's not, it's purposely unrealistic. So what is a, the right a solution? So when you say Israel has a right to defend itself and that Hamas is worse, well, first, let's take those two things one at a time. So Hamas is worse because they killed a lot of civilians in a brutal way. Uh, well, I agree. They killed civilians in a brutal way. Terrible, right? But as a percentage of civilians to, to soldiers, Israel has done a worse job than Hamas. As a percentage, they have killed a higher percentage of civilians to soldiers than Hamas did. So if Hamas are terrorists, which I believe they are, then what does that make Israel when they are significantly worse as a percentage? And as a raw number, they've killed 10 to 15 times as many civilians. I know it's uncomfortable for us because in the West, we view ourselves as saints. Oh, America's the beacon of justice and shining city on a hill, and Israel's our wonderful democratic ally, and the state and the government would never do anything wrong. It's those dastardly terrorists that are the problem, that are non-state actors. No, when we kill civilians, that's also terrorism, and state action matters. Okay, so how could Israel defend themselves? I think they should have done two things, and they could still do it. One is special forces go inside the tunnels. People then say, oh, that's super dangerous. Yeah. That's why you're special forces. So dropping a 2,000 bomb on a residential building, killing hundreds of people inside, does nothing to get Hamas, does nothing to get the hostages. It just kills civilians. It's just an act of terrorism. But if you go inside the tunnels, you could actually, perhaps, through great heroism, rescue some of the hostages and actually get the Hamas fighters, right? But IDF is saying, we're too scared. We don't want to go in the tunnels. We'd rather just bomb from above, even though it doesn't work. And, and then uh, and then, then it will drag out the war forever. Well, that's not an effective solution. So you start with special forces as a way to defend yourself and get the hostages, hostages back. And then after that, what you should, in fact, they should do it right now. You go make a peace deal for a two-state solution with Fatah, the Palestinian Authority in West Bank. Then you bring that Palestinian Authority into Gaza and say they are now the governing body of Gaza. Now, you can't do that today because they would be viewed as collaborators. But if they got a peace deal and the Palestinian Authority delivered the Palestinian state, then they would have the credibility to run Gaza and push Hamas out. That way, do you actually, think they, do you actually think they could push Hamas out? Yes, absolutely. If they got a peace deal, because then they would have massive credibility. Hamas brought war, death and destruction. The Palestinian Authority brought you the state of Palestine. Now, but that would require the Israelis to be magnanimous and say, yes, we were hit. We were hit badly and we were sh shaken by it and we were it, and it was a disaster for our people. And now we've hit back 15 times worse. OK, we've killed enough of them. Let's now make a peace deal and get the safe haven that Israel deserves. It would be infinitely better for Israel and for the Palestinians. But that leads us back to the first answer. But the right wing doesn't win in that scenario then the left wing wins and they lose political power in both Hamas loses political power in Gaza and Netanyahu and I think honestly the monsters that are in his cabinet uh, lose political power in Israel and and so the, the people will continue to suffer as long as everybody keeps voting for right wingers who want more war. Uh, so I actually was in Israel early this week and I and being in Israel I saw uh, well I saw people thought of Bibi Netanyahu. And I've got to say, your analysis on Bibi Netanyahu is totally correct. I think most people uh, don't like Bibi Netanyahu, whether they're right-leaning, left-leaning. Well, not that they don't like Bibi Netanyahu, but they think that he's made huge mistakes. And a lot of them do think he'll be out after after the war ends. But I do disagree that he's only doing this to tr so he can extend the war so he doesn't leave office. I, th I, think, that, I think that's a bit ridiculous. Uh, but I do agree partially on that. Yeah. I mean, look, his best case uh, scenario for Netanyahu is that he was completely and utterly incompetent. He got a report a year ago that Hamas was going to do this exact attack and was like, ah, don't worry about it. Uh, and and he was, he was too worried about his own corruption trial. 
He's too arrogant, too overconfident, too worried about, hey, how can I help the West Bank settlers grab more land and brutalize more Palestinians? He's got the IDF over there when they should have been guarding Israel. Uh, and so that's his best case scenario. His worst case scenario is, well, he funded Hamas. He let uh, the Qataris uh, send that money over and over again. Uh, and he had, and he's on record as saying the stronger Hamas is, the more divided the Palestinians are. And that way we don't have to do a peace deal with them. So that's as direct an admission as it gets that he wants war and not peace and that he aided and abetted Hamas. His best case scenario is a disaster. His worst case scenario is he's a war criminal. And forget the International Criminal Court. I know Israel hates it because they commit so many war crimes they'd never want to be tried over over there. But but I think the people of Israel should try Netanyahu for war crimes because it's, it's 1,200 Israeli civilians and, and, and soldiers. My heart goes out to them. They died when they didn't need to die. And it was, again, at a best case scenario, Netanyahu's overwhelming arrogance that led to those deaths. And in a worst case scenario, he didn't mind it so much as long as he stayed in power. Okay, so let me just ask you a few quick fire questions. So you actually tweeted the other day about the river to the sea chant. Can you explain more about that? Yeah. So Palestinians say from the river to the sea is a political slogan. And it means that, hey, we should uh, we, we believe in democracy. Palestinians and Israelis should uh, live together and there should be one democratic state. That's the most benign interpretation. But there are people who believe that from the river to the sea means, no, we drive the Jews out and, and we take over the whole area and there is no Jewish state. And, you know, I don't know what that means for democracy, etc. And most Jewish folks and non-Jewish folks interpret from the river to the sea as the call to drive the Jews into the sea. And, and take over the whole place. So what I told uh, people that are on the pro-Palestinian side is, guys, if it is interpreted as a call for genocide by some, let alone the majority, let alone the people that you're in a conflict with and you don't want to continue to antagonize, but okay, you hate the Israelis, I got it. But America is critical in this equation and Americans believe that it's a call for genocide, then don't do it. It's counterproductive. It's both counterproductive because it's... If you're the ones chanting for genocide, do you really have the moral high ground? No, you're doing something terrible to our Jewish brothers and sisters that worries them to death. And don't do that as just a matter of decency and morality. But secondly, it's also deeply counterproductive to your cause, because the minute that you chant that, whether you think it's right or wrong, the American press will say, that's it. They're all monsters. They're all they all want genocide. All they want to do is kill the Jews. That's it. Keep bombing the Palestinians. Keep killing the Palestinians. It's the most counterproductive chant in, in the history of this conflict. I don't know why they continue to persist. I, I do know. It's because they're deeply, deeply frustrated. And they feel like, well, don't police my speech. Uh, we're already getting killed enough. But that is a very counterproductive uh, way to approach it. And, and so, I mean, I think that anybody watching this can tell I'm enormously pro-Palestinian. I'm also pro-Israel. I want there to be a wonderful two states there. I want to visit Palestine. I want to visit Israel in peace and security and safety. Uh, but but that chant is not the way to get there. It goes in the opposite direction. Okay, what are your thoughts on the situation in Harvard? So I, I think that all that all that entire hearing was a weapon of mass distraction. Uh, so, hey, there's a hypothetical chant. Do you denounce the hypothetical chant? Or you denounced it, but you didn't What do you mean a hypothetical it? chant? So, like, I don't know that anybody ever actually chanted that at Harvard or Penn or MIT. It was a hypothetical question. People do chant it. That's, that, that happens, and, it's, and by the way, it happened uh, in, in front of a, a Jewish uh, restaurant in Philly, and I hated that. Do not bother innocent Jews in America or anywhere else. That's crazy. If you make it about religion, that's not going to work out for Muslims anyway. That's going to just drive more Islamophobia. And that's the excuse that's been used to brutalize Muslims throughout the world. Do not do it to our Jewish brothers and sisters, okay? But it, but let's say that it either can't even happen at Harvard or Penn. I mean, there has been a lot of vile anti-Semitism recently in Harvard and in different universities. Yeah, if, you, if you're talking about, like, people put on swastikas, etc., yes, absolutely. Terrible anti-Semitism, targeting anyone who's Jewish is nuts. Totally not the right way to go. Not even close. Okay, uh, but but saying, hey, your standard is is by the way, no one even disputes that their standard is, is correct. They're saying if you're targeting it towards individuals, that's wrong, and there'll be consequences for that. If you're changing something in general, there's the issue of the First Amendment and public speech, etc. 
but they said it in a ham-handed way, but it doesn't, God, but think about us talking about a potential chant on a college campus and whether the president of a university should be fired over that, as opposed to the genocide that's actually happening. And it's happening right now. And every day that we delay talking about Harvard and Penn, Israel's dropping more bombs uh, on top of Gaza. And they said they wouldn't do it in the South. They drove, they did literal ethnic cleansing. They drove uh, from the North to the South. It's textbook uh, ethnic cleansing. And they bring them down to the South. And now they're dropping bombs in the South, 2,000 pound bombs. America, in the worst fighting in Mosul and, and the heavy fighting that we had in Iraq, wouldn't drop bombs past 500 pounds because it wasn't right. And we killed tons of civilians in Iraq. But even we thought a 500 pound bomb is by far the maximum you can do in a residential area. Israel dropping bombs that are four times that size, killing hundreds at a time, almost all civilians. And now they're hemmed into a tiny little space, massacre after massacre on a daily basis. And we're worried about what a president might say about a chant at a college in America. We should be infinitely more worried about the actual genocide happening right now in Gaza. Okay, and just before we finish off, I just want to ask you one last question. Would you have a debate with Destiny on the war in Israel? Oh, absolutely, sure. Before I have not anybody on uh, Israel except, except bad faith actors. I don't think Destiny's a bad faith actor. So, uh, yeah, I'm perfectly happy to have it. So I'll be in touch with Destiny and I'll be in touch with your team afterwards to see if we can work that out. Thanks so, so much for joining, Jenk. Yeah, I appreciate it. It's a good discussion and it's a discussion we all have to have. Thank you.